All right, so here's something crazy. I was, you know, I talked to people, right? And I'm a big, you know, computer net head. Like I'm always on the internet. I'm always interested in the internet. I'm making this for the internet, right? And most people I talk to don't really seem to be like computer people or on the internet. <clears throat> and I think we take that for granted how many people aren't here you know then who's listening to this right now uh maybe a select amount of people who know how to use a computer or a phone know how to get to websites like youtube BitChute, rumble etc and are interested in the kind of topics i post probably not a lot of people right we kind of have to realize like how different most people are or how much in a niche we might be which is really fascinating because it it seems like i think you know, we misunderstand not the power that we have but the power that we can obtain that we can exert over at least the digital world because I'm specifically more talking about the internet and the digital world. Like if you think about it, the internet is essentially just the imagination, the mind, the voice, you know, a speaker, a, a screen, you know, a microphone, all these you know, audio visual tools that display words and pictures and sounds and all this stuff that allow us to essentially access the imagination and the mind through a physical device, right? You know, the astral plane physically. We have this internet, this interconnected network of all these computers, which are basically just these, these physical minds, right? And in this world exists information, exists pictures, audios, exists, you know, it is the physical Akashic record, so to speak, the library of life. And you can learn all you want and you can, you know, uh, you can play games, you can listen to music, you can read, you can have fun on the internet or you can, you know, study, take it seriously. You know, some people even make businesses, etc. So it is this, this mental world. And if you're interested, you can make you know, software and applications for people. Now, here's the, here's the, the thing. Most regular people are using software because, okay, so firstly, they're using a phone unless they're working a job where they have to use a computer and then they're probably just using Microsoft Word or Excel, right? Otherwise, they're using their phone. And on their phone, they're using a certain amount of curated or special apps uh, like the regular, you know, SMS app or like a Facebook app to talk to people, right? So communication applications, banking apps, you know, web app browsers, whatever. And I guess people who are technologically orientated can create those. It's almost like you can bind people into a matrix of your own choosing or desire. <laughs> it's kind of an evil spin on it or, or a weird spin on it, but... um. You know, if you control the internet, you, you make the websites, you control what people think and see and all that stuff. Because most people don't look outside of the little boxes, I guess, um, that they've created or that's been given to them. It's a bit like a lot of people, you know, if you look at like older people, they're still watching television, they're still watching the news. And this is like, they believe this stuff. They see it as real, you know, they see it as like, that's a pressing issue. like. Oh no, this issue in some country that you've never even, you don't even know how to pronounce, you know, is like, it's, uh, you know, you see this little things like gas prices go up in Uzbekistan. It's like, oh no, how terrible, you know, because the news makes it really um, important. But who even knows where, you know, I mean, poor Uzbekistan, if gas prices really are going up, I mean, they're going up everywhere. But you know what I'm saying? Like, people are so tapped into whatever is fit to them right it's not really the point of this but it's it's kind of the same thing with phones people just use whatever they're given and an apple or an android is the operating system whatever default browsers that come with it whatever default tools and, and devices and such people don't really explore 
the boundaries of programming or the internet or what computers are really available for. So I was talking to a guy, right? And I'm like telling him, you know, oh, I'm into computers and all this stuff. Are you into that as well? And he was like, no. And I'm like, what? What, what do you mean you're not? You know, it's crazy. And he's like, he tell me that he doesn't have a computer, but he used one for university. And this is a young fella, right? Or youngish, you know? So that, that was just like, what? And I was like, so you just use your phone? Is that how he does it? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Just thinking like, that's what a lot of people live their lives like is that they don't have access to all these information streams all these crazy you know, all this crazy stuff on the internet like the internet is a wild place computers are like so fascinating you know you, it's, a, it's a reality simulation device and to kind of flip this on its head the same way that I'm pretty interested in the computers and all this stuff, and maybe some of you listening are interested in computers and all this, you know, technol technological stuff, right? A lot of people physically are kind of just interested in, like, their work or their, to an extent, their family or whatever little things that they do, right? Um, you know, most people just work, 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 right? That's pretty much what they do. That's their life. It's, it's. I guess that's kind of the, the description of like a drone or an NPC. It's just a, it's a, it's a cog in the machine of society, um, and you know, society kind of enforces that almost with like cost of living. They, you know, it, it pressures people into a state where they kind of have to become a cog. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass. And then it's like the people, the top 10%, you can say, the cream of the crop, uh, look beyond the horizon and they they look beyond just survival and they make something of themselves. Um, it's, it's like, if you think about it, how many of you listening, like, have some kind of political power or some kind of a large company power? I know I don't, right? Like I have power on a computer um, because I've, you know, that's not, no, I have power, you know, I can fix stuff, right? I can like work with things, right? You know, I can cook, I can, you know, I have these powers, but there are people out there who have power in society. Like they can choose where a road goes or a new neighborhood goes or put in a new law or take a law away or like, you know, throw a lot of money around. Like there are people who have certain powers that they've either been inherited or, or, or been blessed with or have built up. Um, the same way that, you know, if you use a computer, you have power on a computer. You have intellectual, verbal, spiritual power, even if you know electronics and all that, right? You know, that is the power of God, this, this electromagnetism. Um, if you look at like AI, and AI is a super powerful tool. Of course, unfortunately, it's been neutered uh, quite significantly, and you have to kind of herd it. It's like a sheep you could herd into a pen to get the right answer some of the time. But to an extent, it is an extension of um, you know an intelligence. It's like the you know the search engine, and now now we have the what would you call it you know, the ai and if you can use that how many people in the world have access to the ai i mean everyone pretty much has access to it because everyone's got a phone right but how many people are using it and you think this is like an extent this is like an enhancement of yourself you can use all these tools to enhance whatever you're doing Ultimately, um, you know, a lot of physical like people in the world would say, well, you're not making money off it or whatever. Um, the thing with that is that people who invest into trying to make money will make money usually, right? People who like, it's like intelligence and making money aren't the same thing. They help each other. It's like strength and intelligence aren't the same thing. They can help each other. Strength and money can help each other, right? You can make money off your body, but these aren't the same qualities. So... Um, again, computers are more focused on intelligence. That's the primary thing. But of course, you can look into other domains. For example, social media is going to take you to that heart space where you can 
interact with people you know, maybe you're playing a cooperative game or a competitive game which puts you more into like the physical like a lower um side of you you know it's like your fight like a fight and flight like anxiety right um so it's, you can go into different worlds in the internet you, you can go into your head like listening to music or your ears you'd say um it's again it's a simulation of reality you can do whatever you want it's whatever you desire is is what you get on the computer um, but to kind of bring it back home just know that a lot of people don't use computers they do use phones and they use them for like work or they just kind of look on facebook or or like you know look on websites and look at like um various things online <laughs> which you can probably imagine pornography and uh, and movies and such, you know, or maybe some people just play games, right? But the computer is such a it's such a versatile, such a um, interesting tool that you know if you're interested in intelligence and the mind and imagination and simulation, you know this is the tool. This is the magical device. Uh, the wizard this is like what a magician or a wizard of the past could only dream about and we have these things and you have power over other people who don't have this in a way you know um, I've developed so much knowledge and intelligence and, and other you know, imagination all this kind of stuff from just browsing the internet you know just reading people's stories um just reading about things you know just watching stuff you know, what, listening to music whatever it happens to be and um a lot of people don't do that which is just it's just crazy to me but i guess in the same way that some people have power in society some people don't some people have power in the internet some people don't some people you know to whatever you invest your life into partly it's what you're born into um yeah, it's about like that, a bit like that. Anyway, of course, check the links in the description for social and commercial stuff if you're interested. And have a nice day. Okay, so this is kind of a bit of a s uh, simple topic. It's almost too simple to say, but I think it's a good thing to think about. Now, I've always wondered, like, in my life, is there a point at which it kind of gets comfortable and nice and like good and like uh, the way i see it is once you hit that middle ground that's when you, you you've like you know the game of life it's a bit like when you play a video game you hit that middle ground is when you kind of know how the game works you can get whatever you want you know you can you can um, play the way you want right so in life it's like you learn society you learn to drive you learn to um make money and you know and, tr and do business and trade and all that you learn the language you learn how people work you, you learn how you know structures the society and hierarchies and blah 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 and you kind of you, you you feel comfortable right you get to a point of comfort um and but you can go beyond that you can go beyond that and become like a like a like a superstar, like billionaire, you know, super genius, super strong, super whatever you want, right? Like a superhuman person, demigod, or even god, who knows, right? The same way you can be below that, you can be poor, you can be ugly, you can be filthy, you can be just no skills, no talents, no anything, no just dreadful, miserable sack of shit, right? And uh, chances are a lot of us have been there. A lot of us have been a miserable sack of shit in our lives, unfortunately. And the idea I want to plant is that we have the middle, the upper, and the, and the lower. Imagine your car, if you have a car, if you don't, your motorcycle, or your bicycle, or your legs, if that's all you got. Your vehicle, right? Your vehicle's at a certain level of how good it is you know, how repaired it is maintained etc how old maybe it might be how new it is whatever what technology it's got in it maybe you have an absolute shit box the fact that you understand you have a shit box means that you know there are better cars there are cars that are good enough that will get you to work or that you'll if you use a car for a job that you can do that with the car and it's good enough it's it, it works fine enough you gotta repair it sometimes mostly it works right that's the middle ground 
Then there are shit boxes constantly breaking. You've got to funnel so much money into it. It's just absolute stress, absolute nightmare. Varying degrees of shit boxes, right? Then there are really nice cars, which is just like ultra reliable, super strong. You know, if you ever get into an accident, you just, you've just cleaved half of someone's car while you don't even have a scratch. It's just perfect, you know? Just phenomenal. You haven't changed your tires since the 90s. That's how good they are. Um, and you haven't changed your oil since then as well, right? This is for everything. This is for you as a person. This is for, like, your relationships. Like, how good is your relationship? Like, if you're married, how good is that? And if you have children or if you have friends, how good is all your relationships? Are they great? Is it terrible? Is it good enough that it works? If you realize this, you can improve them. You can improve different parts of your life, right? You just have to analyze and think, you know, about all the factors of your life, relationships, career, finances, like home, intelligence, uh, your physical self, your beauty, maybe, which is life satisfaction, you know, maybe your hobbies, right? Spiritual life, you know, where you see your life going, all these different things you can analyze. How good am I in these? How comfortable am I? You know, am I at that middle ground yet? Because here's the thing, average isn't a bad thing. People complain a lot, but the, the truth is, to be an average person, to have a car, to work a job, to have like a like a family that you know loves you and all that, and children, like that's a lovely thing to have. A lot of people don't have that. You know, there a lot of people don't, and some people have more than that. Some people are really rich. Some people have all pretty much all the they can. Feel all their desires. They live crazy lives, you know, beyond whatever we could even imagine. Um, what do you want to live, of course? And as I said, average isn't a bad thing. You need to get average first before you can go beyond average, right? If you're not at an average point, you need to work towards that. Are you earning average income for your country especially if you're a man that's a big important thing right are you average in, in like strength in maybe beauty in maybe intelligence you know you got to get there first and then if you want you can go beyond it but average is kind of a comfort point almost you've just you've you've gotten the ground you've gotten the floor and um, you do, some people have to work for that, you know, some people aren't born with it, so, anyway, it's just something to think about in your own life, the three different levels of quality, competence, greatness, whatever, the bad, the neutral, and the good, of course, we all want to be at the good or the great, so good luck. So when you think of a musician and you listen to their music, when I was young, I only listened to the music and I thought, wow, you know, such nice melodies and instrument playing and, you know, all this kinds of stuff, right? But now that I'm older, I can listen to music and think, okay, this is a product of someone's life. One of the most obvious examples, of obvious genres is, I think, especially in, like, black American music, it's very much they kind of make it almost as a product of their life. Well, something like classical music is more just music um, in its highest form to, you know, to express audio as an art, right? So the kind of like the more focus and the lyrics is more on the experience, you know, of the person or their story they're trying to tell or whatever, that they're trying to express and then more focus on the instrumentation and the actual music is you know a focus on um exploring the art of course you can combine them going on so really what this means is that 
the music someone creates or any art for that matter, you know, anything for that matter, is a product of their life. Meaning that eventually I found out you can't just play an instrument over and over and over and over again and try to create something that you want that's like another person's because you don't have the experience that that person has, so to speak. Playing the instrument is very good for the technical experience. You know, doing the thing, whatever it happens to be, you're, you're practicing, you can replace instrument and music or something else, is good to get the technical abilities. And you need to do that, and you need to keep doing that, right? But it is the experience of the person, you know, the quality of the soul, is something else that expresses outward. If you think of like school and training and, and all this kind of stuff, you think maybe a country will train like woodworkers or, or brick, and, you know, like mason workers, right, and metal workers and such in a specific uh, manner, you know, which is like it's, it's focused on like certain aspects of safety and focused on certain aspects of like, you know, you have to use these specific materials and cut it in this way and use these measurement systems, right? And it produces people who essentially are the same or similar. Of course, everyone's got their own style, but um, that's because they've been taught technically from like a country or a system that requires those kinds of specifications, right? Similarly, you know, a classically taught musician is going to have that classical style. A person who grew up maybe teaching themselves is going to have a specific style. So the kind of the way that you are taught or the way that you learn is also going to influence and affect you. Now, if you want to get good at something, you have to do it pretty much every day, nearly every day. You, know? um, you can take breaks off every so often, but the, the reality is you kind of have to do it every day. And this is a difficult one because we don't all have time for everything. You know? Most people can make an hour per day to do something. Most people do spend an hour on absolutely nothing. They could maybe schedule their life a little better. You know, um, maybe instead you could cook for an entire week in a day and then get all your or most of your cooking out of the way and you know, maybe you, you do a little extra cleaning you, you organize your life in a way that you can have an extra hour um, or an extra half an hour or something like that right you got to do certain things every day if you want to get better at them um, if you want to get stronger you want to get like a better bench press or you want to get better at push-ups, you do them every day to a point where you don't get tired enough that, you know, the next day, I mean, of course, you're going to get, be a bit tired, but um, or if you can't do it every day, you do it basically every second. And you're going to notice you just get better and better and better at what you do usually until you hit a point in which you actually do have to take a break. And then after the break, you do get better. Um, but I'm noticing that if I do something like I do certain things like exercise twice a week, right? I really don't, I'm not improving all that much in my exercise, my physical body. I am improving, but it's not to a point that I want, you know, I want more improvement physically, but I just don't have the time. Well, or, the, the, or, or maybe I want to spend that time on other things and kind of I'm relaxing and you know just I've got a lot on my plate I'll put it that way right so until I've got a few things worked out maybe in half a year then I can spend some more time physically and the point being I'm just doing a maintenance routine I'm just exercising so that I don't lose strength I don't lose you know physical ability right two times a week probably only like 20 30 minutes and of course I'm doing other I'm doing other things, you know, physically. So maybe I'll spend like an hour or two, you know, doing some kind of gardening or whatever. You know, it's all physical activity, right? Or you know, so I'm still getting more exercise, but it's like it's not enough that I want, right? And I've kind of understood that. It's like, okay, if I want to push my exercise and get my body stronger, I'm going to have to do it pretty much every day. That's just that's just how it's going to be.
so yeah yeah it kind of sucks but you know that's that's an example you know what do you want to get good at you gonna have well, what do you want to grow what do you want to grow in you're pretty much gonna have to do it every day it may just have to be the focus of your life you know and what we can do is certain times like for one year you focus on a certain thing right and then the next year you focus on another thing and you, you learn skills and of course those skills will degrade if you don't train them but of course you do inherently get better as a person so when you come back to those skills you actually can learn more it's like you've got more expansive ability like more 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 like a rubber band you can pull it further now because you've just improved yourself just by living right so that's not such a bad thing right but ultimately you're not exactly you know you're not getting as good as you were or as quickly as you were um if you're not being consistent and really putting in the work and the hours and such and taking it really seriously it's just like if you want to learn a certain skill uh, to, to have like a job something that's kind of complicated right that could take years you're gonna to have to put that time in to learn it um, I've got some things that I kind of want to learn um, and it really is just I just kind of have to put more time into it and maybe it's gonna take a few years but yeah anyway that's kind of all I want to say is really just you know two days a week is a maintenance routine five days a week will start to push you further so take it as it is an interesting concept is the slow steady acquisition of understanding and knowledge of this world i don't know about you but i personally want to figure this world out completely to understand everything and it's not some maybe selfish desire or some grand you know foolish childish desire or something i simply just don't like not knowing things it's a bit like you playing a game you know you want to know every little thing about the game you want to know where you have to go to trade you want to know what items are the best to sell you know you want to know where to get the items or how to make them into you know pickaxes or something understand all the classes etc you i want to know everything about life just so it's like I can kind of relax you know I can kind of be like all right I just know how things work um, so anything I want to do because here's the thing if you want to do something you have to understand it I mean of course you can throw darts at the dark in the dark but will they land probably not and you do learn by doing when you don't know something but Look, I'm really not interested in making mistakes. I don't know, or, or like, you know, it's, I'm kind of too old to care about all this stuff, right? <laughs> it's like when you're young, it's all it's all fun and exciting, and you know, you learning about all these new stuff. And now I'm just like, you know, I just want to win. Like, I just want to kind of sit back and put my feet up and just relax a little bit. I don't want to have to continuously will be learning all this new crap and like having to need to know it to live you know it's just life is so complicated nowadays it's just increasingly becoming more and more complicated and of course a lot of people stop learning when they get comfortable enough which usually means money you know having enough money uh being married you know it's like that brings people enough like biological comfort where they just kind of know their little niche they just know what their work is they just know their little cycle right i i guess i'm bored you know I'm, i want to i want to just figure everything out and like try a lot of things that I want to do you know like I've got a lot of things that I want to do and um 
it requires me understanding this stuff. I do notice the more and more, you know, the more I live, the more I understand stuff, right? And I've built my own systems, which I kind of teach to everyone listening, you know, understanding archetypes and like dividing things up uh, in like a circle into different elements and stuff, right? And that's like a simplified view of reality. Is just you just categorizing everything. And then of course you try to learn like physics, you know, you learn about physical elements um, and spiritual elements as well and such. And, you know, material things and immaterial things, right? And you just learn about everything about the world. Of course, you know, it can also be concepts or it could be like social interaction or just, you know, just whatever, you know, right? And once you know something, you can like, once you've done it and you know it, then you can just, you can do it, right? You don't have to, um, it's like when you've driven somewhere enough times, you just do it by instinct, it's subconscious. I want that to be like everything, you know? Um, just cause it's exhausting. It's, it's, it's exhausting to just, if you do lots of things, it is exhausting to do lots of things, to learn lots of new things, right? Again, most people are just creatures of their habit and cycle. They're, whatever new stuff happens to them is maybe something slightly new at work. It's like a new product or they have to make a new thing. And it's like, oh, that's their new thing for the day or some new television show, right? New, new thing. Like, from their, I don't know, if their phones. It's not very, they don't learn, like most people don't learn a whole lot. And it's just, you, you become a different kind of person if you learn lots of different things, right? It's like reality resists you almost in a way. Um, if you do lots of things, reality resists you. It kind of wants you to just, be stagnant and do nothing. I think that's because everyone's kind of doing that. So it's like their energy is resisting. It's a bit like when you improve yourself and other people are like really angry and spiteful because they understand that they could improve themselves too, but they're not. So they like look at you with just like anger or disgust or spite or whatever. That's kind of how life works when you, you know, you. <laughs> You do a lot of things, I guess. You you go against the grain, really, I guess. Um, going on, yeah, I notice just every year I learn more and more stuff. And eventually, I do believe I will come to a point where I pretty much, I, I feel like I have a firm grasp in life. And I feel like I'm coming to that point. I'm not there yet. Maybe a few years, maybe like five to ten years, where I could pretty much, I could pretty much do anything to a basic degree. I'm not talking about being a master at everything, right? But pretty much, you know, anything I want to do, I can just do because I understand how life works. I've learnt the game and the systems of life, the physics of how it all works. I think that's an important thing to do, think about and such, right? And then we can just, we can write it all down and teach people and let them learn it 10 times quicker than we did, really to write the book of life. Because I don't know about you, but like this, as I said, this stuff's painful. It's painful to learn, to live in this ultra complex world and if we have children or we should probably say when we have children you know they're going to have to learn that you know, whatever how more complicated the world is in the future so i definitely think they need us to figure this thing out and to you know be able to teach them simply so they don't have to struggle as much um, and eventually it'll come to a point where, I don't know, we just figure out how to like download information into us or it's, or it's maybe your like genetics are just so strong that like your children just have, um, they just kind of understand everything naturally. I think that's, 
that's kind of how we you know how it works is that like you heal yourself enough because that's what I know the more you heal yourself and strengthen yourself and get better and all this stuff the more you can learn quickly and you just kind of understand things intuitively and it's just like you're just in tune with the world and it just teaches you and tells you whatever you need well if you're not you can't learn what you need to learn it's just like it's blocked yeah and that's about it 